Hello there! I'm gonna open up a box that came to me from Hasbro. This is hashtag free product. This is a kingdom-themed press box that you may well have seen several times already floating around on this here YouTube in the Transformers space. That's because this was sent out by Hasbro to promote the kingdom Netflix cartoon that is uh, imminently upcoming to finish off that trilogy. Uh, also, this box is not as uh, incredibly long as the Earthrise press box, which was a nice surprise. Uh, it's, it's got some prints all over the place. It's full of some stuff. I want to look at what's in it. Uh, I want to share it with you. I should mention I already looked at what's in it because it's it's known. And uh, because of that, I'm able to share some more fun anecdotes. Uh, but of course, to start things off, we must read this before posting. Uh, these are the FTC guidelines, the Federal Trade Commission of not Canada. Uh, and since I've decided to post this unboxing video, in accordance with FTC guidelines, I must state, you know, clearly Hasbro gave this or sent this to me for free, and thank you, Hasbro, for giving me these products, hashtag free product, and then tag, and then post! There's also the other uh, informational bit, which basically is explaining that this is... Uh, Aside from promoting the upcoming Netflix cartoon, it's also hitting on the 90s nostalgia of the Beast Wars 25th anniversary. Uh, well, the Beast Wars nostalgia primarily, but it says right here the word 90s nostalgia. Uh, but there's no there's no brightly colored clothing inside this thing. There's not even there's not even a T-shirt. Instead, there is a selection. This is also new to me. Usually, there's just a list of what's in it. This time. I first looked at this list, and I was like, wait, how'd you fit all that in this box that's smaller than the Earthrise one? That's not possible. And then I, I saw selection. So basically, I think everyone got two of these, and then either the Deluxes or the Voyager out of this, I think. The rest of this is locked in. And uh, they, they'd love for you to talk about uh, things with hashtags and etc. <clears throat> nice cardstock. It makes good noises. The first thing in here is a physical copy of issue one of the current IDW, or current, you know, in the year 2021, IDW Beast Wars comic book uh, by Burnham and Burcham. I was glad to get this because I've been getting all my comics digitally, and it's nice to get an issue one uh, by a cover artist and interiors artist, let's be real here. Uh, who I like to interact with a whole lot of conventions. So someday, I'm gonna get our Josh Burcham to sign this comic book. By the way, if you haven't read this comic book, it's pretty good. Uh, and it's got it's got uh, interviews and design works in the back. Uh, scale chart, it's got, where's, 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 our, where's she, where is she? There she is. Scold! There she is. I pulled that ISO down a bit, it was a little bit a little bit bright. It's still a little bit bright. Anyway, these are some prints, uh, art prints of concept art by Rooster Teeth. So I am assuming these are relevant to uh, Netflix Kingdom. So I, I guess implied spoilers. Uh, it's not. It's not really super hard to tell some of this is going to happen. But I, I like the vibes these are giving me. Uh, as far as like this giving me a huge vibe of the cover of the Optimus vs. Megatron Bat vs. Alligator mini comic from the original Beast Wars toy, the two-pack. It just gives me that vibe. Like, not this part back here. Everything... Get that off screen. The rest of that gives me that vibe. I don't think either of them are going to appear at all in the Netflix show. But whether it was intended or not, it gave me that vibe. This is something that I think could have been the kingdom reveal more so than any like you know toys or that the larger poster just the image of the ark crashed into the volcano but a cheetah is looking at it i think this would have been a great tease for like the one week of this being all you know about kingdom uh but you know we're well beyond that at this point uh this is just pretty artwork like, this, this is nice stuff i wish this kind of concept art made it into art books, like coffee table art books, more often than I think it does. Um, like, I mean, this this is a bunch of concept art prints that are in a press box that the general public can't even get at. Uh, also, it's credited to Rooster Teeth, but that's it. I don't know who I get to sign these. 
if at some point I'm in a position to get an artist to sign them, I don't know who the named artist is, and hopefully that can be pieced together if it hasn't been pieced together already. Now, the big nostalgia in this for me was this. Uh, season 1 of Beast Wars on DVD, Shout Factory version with a, I believe, custom uh, insert you know, paper thing here to, to be for not for sale promotional use and to have the Beast Wars 25th logo on it. But the real nostalgia for this is when I first opened this box, I heard something rattling around in it, so I took a look inside. This was, well, there it goes, uh, forever. This was wide open, uh, and this little, little, you know, spindle basket was was just sort of rolling around on its own the discs are fine they're all locked in but uh as you can see like the the top hinge in here was broken now if you had formative years in the era of these kind of dvd box sets that's some nostalgia right there because these uh things these fit four discs into one dvd case things they always friggin' broke. They never worked, so it would have been it would have been too perfect if this hadn't broken. That's my rationale for, you know, an otherwise kind of like, well, you know, what am I gonna do? I guess I'll put the pieces of it back inside here as, as though they're, you know, intentionally part of an artifact. Uh, artifacted extra. This is this is all off kilter now. <laughs> okay, so toys wise, I did not get Voyager Inferno. Uh, I got Deluxe Air Razor and Deluxe Ractonite. Uh, and what I'm going to do with the toys is, aside from like you know showing in a whole a whole thing of what it all looks like and and filming the B-roll of the packaging for when I eventually someday do the reviews of these, I'm going to do some quick thoughts on the included toys. I figured that's a you know a nice little balance to strike. Um, now, I, I, I like to do, you know, little tricks. Uh, I think I gotta get this box out of the way, hang on. I like to do little tricks to make packaging disappear, and, you know, it's always on jump cuts, and I like, I like it when people start to catch on, and they're like, oh, oh, I spotted the frame where you switched it out, so it looked like, you know, it looked like magically the toy came out of the package. You try to spot the frame on this one. This is gonna be the greatest magic trick the devil ever pulled, because I'm about to open these, and you're gonna, you're not even gonna believe it. I'm gonna open these instantaneously. Yeah, you got no idea how I did that. Not one! Anyway, quick thoughts on Arachnite. Uh I, I had Paleo Trex, you know, uh, early on. Uh, Arachnite, I was not sure what to expect from him. I was pleasantly surprised by Paleo Trex, given I have not actually enjoyed the weaponizers or modulators all that much. Like, they're fine, but the, the overall... Uh, mission statement behind them never really connected with me. For some reason, on the fossilizers it did. This guy like really cinched it in. There is something about this, this, the the, rack, the 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 Ractonite's whole look uh, that not only is is a fun you know pile of accessories and whatnot with a friggin' drill arm here, uh, but look at look at all this. The fossilizers give me big ass Bloodborne vibes, and this dude only adds to that. Uh, he is, he's weird and stumpy, but, like, he's got so many things going on, and, like, and, like, this <laughs> is a whole thing. There's a lot, there's a lot to this, this, this one that I, I enjoy more than Paleo Trex. Paleo Trex has, like, a couple tricks that are cool. Ractonite feels like there's just thicker layers of tricks. Still little tricks, but thicker layers of little tricks going on. This is just the deluxe of the line for me so far. Air Razor pulls magic. Like the only the only non-magical thing is like these things you gotta you gotta swap them from a peg to a peg if you really want to keep them on there all the way through. But like just like check this out, right? All of the hinges involved to reshape the wings is incredible. It's incredible. The the fact that these wings exist on a deluxe transformer. Uh with, with this much natural organic motion available, that's leaving out the entire transformation being a fairly incredible thing with, you know, on the level of the other deluxes that have come out, the other, the other beast deluxes, I should say, that have come out, where you're getting this entire sense of full-on mass shifting, in my opinion, uh that goes above and beyond expectation. And I am realizing now that I was about to get myself completely lost in that transformation while talking at the same time. Cause there's, there's just enough going on that it's really tricky, but like, just check out this half and half of where everything's gone is it's lovely. 
on on a transformation, by the way, that I think most reasonable fans were willing to just let go. You know, were willing to to be like, this this just ain't gonna happen. How are you going to fold Air Razor up into one an entire bird? And uh, and I think they I think they pull it off. I don't think I pulled this off because I know where this goes. Yet it's not going in. Uh, story of my life. But you know, eventually things work themselves out. The first time my memory card has ever run out on this camera. Anyway, Air Razor's great. I'm looking forward to writing down some stuff about her in the future. Wow, it's really cool how she turns into the Netflix toys that came with this as well. So the two that I got were uh, Deep Cover and Sparkless Bot. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to crack these open and uh, get you some thoughts ASAP. And you got toys. Uh, so Deep Cover is Sideswipe, but blue. They ended up making a lot of this. Sideswipe is a mold. When that thing first got shown off, right? I was dogging on on that one and Hound on on the podcast so much, and then I got Sideswipe in hand, and I was like, not just I was eating my words, and I was saying, please, sir, feed me some more. I'll keep talking, uh, and that's how we ended up with like 15 repaints of Sideswipe. You're welcome. This is like the second deep cover as well. I I recently had passed on clean deep cover. Um, during a Toys R Us sale here in Canada at a fine Canadian brand called Toys R Us. And uh, now I want him because now I got the other one. You know that feeling? You know that feeling? Um, I already did that. Something about this figure, right, that completely works top to bottom is this transformation. Like, this is just, this is the perfect workhorse deluxe. This this was the one of the the quiet, just like, we win moments of Siege. Because, I mean, I've seen folks, you know, who don't dig this toy, but often, like, the worst thing to say about him is, like, it's either him him shoulders wide, or it's, like, he kind of boring. And when you're a workhorse, someone calling you boring is, like, the clo as close to a compliment as, as, a, as, a, as a criticism can get. That's, you, can, you can write home about that one. Uh, but just a good transformation, a good robot mode, a, a, an alt mode that works way better in person than it did in the initial promo photos back when it was Sideswipe, at least. This one, all this extra stuff is like, yeah, there's your, there's your Netflix money um, doing some stuff to bring this together a little bit. Visually, these streaks uh, are, are helpful in, in dealing with the, the big problem I have with the figure, which is just like the, the pod top. The more you do to the pod top to not make it just look like a big block a pod top uh the better the figure ends up i, I obviously I, I i do think the cleaner uh deep cover is the nicer deep cover i think they're both deep cover i could just be wrong about that too i mix up all my side swipe repaints i mean they all look the same right they all look like side swipe anyway uh the sparkless bot is the one i was really interested to see in person and i agree with the choir or at least the two people I saw on Twitter who were saying that this thing looks way better in person uh, than it did in its promo photos. There's a lot more um, detail to this rusted patina that they implied, and uh, I mean, obviously, I have I have a small bias in that I also really like this deluxe. I know there's folks who, again, aren't as into it, but I generally like the Fair Ladies um, robots as long as they turn out, like, vaguely competent. And I think that uh, this one turned out, you know, at the very least, vaguely competent. I haven't actually looked at this in its in its alt mode yet. And uh, I'm, I'm immediately reminded, uh, throw in some nostalgia, why I started to film transformations, not just blind running with the camera going, because I'm already panicking. Uh, I'm a mess. You can't see the sweat that's pouring off my brow as I'm like, wait, did I forget a key step already whilst I'm talking and doing all this at the same time? Uh, that's that's a little bit of that, what you call, behind-the-scenes chatter. A little bit of that uh, that making of uh, stuff. A little bit of that... A little bit of that... Uh, that uh, behind the curtain, a little bit of that how the cheese is cut, a little bit of how how the how the in, how the intestines uh, make the magic, um, a touch of that old uh, you know how the beer is brewed, um, 
one one might even say in this you know 2021 in the world we live in now uh a little bit of the old uh you know how the how the uh, the strands are dehydrated and decarbed and we got this um nice looking rust vehicle uh i had this initial reaction to it and i, I definitely am still feeling it this stuff all being smoky clear plastic is kind of taking away from from the look to me like like at least if you're going to do the clear plastic do some of this because this looks way too clean for all of this delicious mess that's that's going on here look at these visual textures and then like the like, and the wheels are black i guess that's you know i could deal with it but you know a dry brush on the wheels and just doing the top in more of this or like covering it in cracked up stuff oh that would have elevated this a whole bunch like as like, you know there's ways to fix things with paint or stickers or etc but you know easy crit to levy too clean up here for how dirty it is down here anyway that's been my little unboxer of this little press box uh it is you know behind a whole lot of other folks who already took a look at it i had some fedex things is the, i think the scientific term uh but thank you again to hasbro uh for sending this my way this hashtag free hashtag product hashtag transformers hashtag kingdom hashtag war for cybertron hashtag box with hashtag toys uh and uh i don't know what else to say other than uh you know uh be beasties 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 beasties